Yeah. See, real niggas come first because we men in respect and we do what we want in these streets. And dope boys come second because money make the motherfucking world go round. And fly niggas come third because he might ain't got no money, but he still can pull the baddest bitch in the building. Under that system. I see America with half the number of prisons, half the number of prisoners, 10,000 fewer homicides a year, inner cities in which there's a chance for these poor people to live without being afraid for their lives, respectable citizens who are now, or citizens who might be respectable who are now addicts, not being subject to becoming criminals in order to get their drug, being able to uh, get drugs for which they're sure of the quality. Si algún día tengo una posición, voy a prohibir eh, de que nadie vaya preso. Cuando hay traficantes de droga que están matando a la mitad de la juventud, que yo los cogería a todos y los mataría sin sentimiento ninguno. Los picaba como si pica un cochino. Me gustaría darte datos concretos con nombre y apellido de personas que están involucradas en esto. Esta, esta investigación nace de la permanente vinculación de las Fuerzas Armadas chilenas y las policías con la Embajada Norteamericana, que se remonta a la dictadura militar en donde se realizaban operaciones de tráfico de drogas para financiar operaciones encubiertas. En democracia, solo en el último tiempo, han asesinado a personas para tomar estas vinculaciones. Uno es el joven soldado Fabián Vega, asesinado en junio del año 2005 al interior de su regimiento del ejército en Calama y llevado al parque Loa para colgarlo. Ahí tú tienes una persona que fue asesinada por descubrir esto. El mismo año 2006, soldados norteamericanos de la Operación Unitas con el encubrimiento de la Armada de Chile violaron a menores en Valparaíso y sirvieron de transporte grandes cantidades de droga a Estados Unidos. Esto fue publicado por el medio El Mercurio Valparaíso en Chile. El año 2009, uno de ellos, el marín Lester Santiago Galvez, fue sorprendido con una menor en similares situaciones y dejado en libertad para volver a Estados Unidos. Respecto a... You know, the same thing happened under prohibition of alcohol as is happening now. Under prohibition of alcohol, deaths from alcohol poisoning, from poisoning by uh, things that were mixed in with the alcohol, the illegal bootleg alcohol, went up sharply. Similarly, under drug prohibition, deaths from overdose, from adulterations, from adulterated substances. Now, that shows the absurdity of it. During prohibition, when I was a teenager. Alcohol was readily available. Bootlegging was common. Any idea that alcohol prohibition was keeping people from, from drinking was absurd. There were speakeasies all over the place. But more than that, we had this spect spectacle of Al Capone, of the hijackings of the gang wars. Almost all, there are an enormous number of innocent victims now. You've got the people who are uh, whose purses are stolen or who are bashed over the head by people trying to get enough money for their next fix. You've got the people killed in the random drug wars. You've got the corruption of the legal establishment. You've got the innocent victims of the taxpayers who have to pay for more and more prisons and more and more prisoners and more and more policemen. You've got the rest of us who don't get decent law enforcement because all the law enforcement officials are busy trying to do the impossible problem. The case for prohibiting uh, uh, drugs is exactly as strong, as strong and as weak as the case for prohibiting people from overeating. We all know that overeating causes more deaths than, than drugs do. Why, can't, why, why isn't it perfect? If it's, if, it's, if it's in principle okay for the government to say you must not consume drugs because they do you harm, why isn't it all right to say you must not eat too much because you do harm? Why isn't it all right to say you must not try to go in for skydiving because you're likely to die? Why isn't it all right to say, oh, skiing, that's no good. That's a very dangerous sport. You'll hurt yourself. Where do you draw the line? What scares me is a notion of continuing on the path, path we're on now, which will destroy our free society, making it an uncivilized place. There's only one way you can really enforce the drug laws currently. The only way to do it is to adopt the policies of Saudi Arabia, Singapore, some other countries adopt, in which a drug addict 
is subject to capital punishment or at the very least to having his head chopped off. If we were willing to use penalties like that, well, would that be a society you'd want to live in? Yo no voy a dejar que más nunca nadie llegue. Vaya 10 años a prisión en el combinado del este por esto. ¿Tú sabes por qué? Porque esto, vamos a hacer igual que Holanda. Vamos a hacer igual que Holanda. Vamos a hacer igual que Holanda. Que Dios está muerto. Por tener esto. Por tener esto. Más nunca. Nadie va a ir preso en Cuba. Por tener esto. ¿Ok? Así que, si algún día se deciden a creer en su hermano Emil de a pie, este va a ser el único que no te va a juzgar de nada. Voy a prohibir, ¿eh? De que nadie vaya preso. Por tener esto. De que nadie vaya preso. Por tener esto. De que nadie vaya preso. Por tener esto. Y los coraría. En... You guys got a way to be going soon, so. Uh. Some people like to get away, take a holiday from the neighborhood. Take flights to Miami Beach or to Hollywood. But I'm taking the Greyhound on that Hudson River line.